It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by The Beat Seat. There's an Italian town that's struggling to sell off its empty homes for one euro. I'm fucking going, dude. Are you kidding me? Italy for a euro? I got a, I got a buck lying around over here and some change. Got four quarters. I'm going to get that. I'm pretty sure a dollar is maybe about the same as a euro right now. I got a couple extra dimes and, and nickels lying. I'm buying a house in whatever town in Italy this is. So let's get into it. I, rem- I actually went over the story I remember about last year this first came up where they were offering this, and I'm surprised no one bought any. Let's see, Italy's one euro home sales have been attracting a lot of interest over the past few years, with dozens opting to snap up abandoned properties in some of the country's depopulated towns. But while towns like Musamelli in Sicily and Zungoli in Campania have managed to offload various abandoned dwellings to foreigners longing to live the Italian dream, some have struggled to sell their empty homes. Among them is Patrica, a remote medieval village of barely 3,000 residents located south of Rome, where more than 40 properties deserted in the early 1900s have been left to rot. Perched on a rocky plateau overlooking the Sacco Valley in central Italy, Patrica is an idyllic spot, but life here wasn't easy for locals. Guys, it looks kind of cool, you know, like an old school ghetto, that you gotta go and like bring a bulldozer in, you know? But this like valley here with these hills in the background, this is great for vino. Go become a drunkard, you know what I mean? Make your own wine, learn learn Italian, or just go out there and be like, and you just, the only word you know is vino. And you're there in Italy, you're that guy. People are like, what the, that guy never learned the language? You know, and they're like, you just should have learned, you know, but you're drinking. You're, you're so drunk. You can never learn the language of Italian. I could, it's a, that's the dream, right? Anyway, uh, many left in search of a brighter future, leaving their homes empty for decades. In the attempt to breathe new life in the dying village, the town's mayor, Lucio Fidelisso, has been trying to immaculate the success of other Italian villages who've put their empty homes up for one euro, or just over a dollar. So it is just a few. Guys, make sure you bring a couple extra dimes, nickels, and maybe even a few pennies. You just don't know what the exchange rate's going to be when you pull up to Fordaccio, is that what it was called? In the town of Musamelli, no? Pratica, this is Patrica, guys. All right, so we first mapped all abandoned houses and made an official call out to the owners to invite them to hand over the dilapidated family properties, but we managed to sell just two homes for one euro. That's $2, they got. Oh, wait, hold on. Did they sell two homes for one euro? And so God, someone got 50 cents, like half a euro to get a house? I'm thinking, I'm thinking he bought, he got two bucks. I think he got at least $2 out of it, guys. <laughs> you know? While local authorities and towns left underpopulated due to earthquakes and other natural calamities have the jurisdiction to put abandoned homes up for sale without permission from the owners, this isn't the case for Patrica and other towns like it. We first need availability of owners, their heirs, in disposing of their old houses. Only they can place these properties up for sale with their consent, which makes the process very complicated, almost impossible. Fordeliso explains that the town received a positive response from 10 owners after sending out a public call to involve them in our One Euro Homes project. But they withdrew at the last minute. The rest never replied. Fordeliso feels that those who changed their minds may have done so because of issues with other relatives who own shares of the same property. Abandoned buildings in old Italian towns are sometimes split between multiple heirs who own just a section, like a bathroom, a balcony, kitchen. Are you kidding me? You have people who own multiple heirs who own sections of the house? This is insane. I own the bathroom. You can't drop a douche in there. That's my Ducheru bathroom. You know, you're not welcome. You're, or you're just balconying it. 
Like, can I have something to eat? And like, no, you stay out on the balcony. That's yours. <laughs> you can't come inside the kitchen because the kitchen's mine. I'm the kitchen owner. What is with Italy? Here we're splitting up the house into different rooms. Fabrizio, you get the coat closet. Poor Fabrizio, he's in that coat closet. You know what I mean? Comes out like a gnome. He comes out at night, the door creaks open, Fabrizio comes out. Gets chased out of there by the owner of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Oh, in the past, it was customary for children to inherit parts of their family home, including patches of land or the bathroom, you know, a coat closet, Fabrizio. Oh, but it's not always a guarantee that relatives will still be on good terms when they're left with the toilet and they have to clean that toilet after the family used it. Oh yeah, let's just go over it. Family used it for years. Everybody's in that house. All of a sudden they're like, we're splitting up the asset. You get the crapper. Now you're in there with the cleaning supplies. You know what I mean? You got some ire for your brother sitting there in the kitchen making a, like a, a pastry or whatever they do in Italy, <laughs> right? A fresh espresso. I, I, yeah, uh, Tomatari, I'm uh, here in the bathroom. I do the clean of the pooparoo. Uh, can you make me a, a, a espresso? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is my kitchen, my espresso machine that was in the kitchen. You know, when mom and dad left me the kitchen and left you the crapper, you know, they left you plenty of cleaning supplies in there. They could have left you an espresso machine in the bathroom. You know that down the road, the Atuzzi's have an espresso machine in their bathroom. So when their son, <laughs> Osmarando, got the, ba the bathroom, he's making espressos in there while he cleans up the poops. You know? That's on you. <laughs> Just remember, you could be Fabrizio over there in the uh, coat closet. <laughs> Uh, I hope my comedy doesn't go over what he said. <laughs> the disposal of potential one euro homes faced a deadlock as most relatives sharing the same property were at odds with one another or personal reasons and couldn't agree on the sale. Some hardly spoke. <laughs> Again, the bathroom thing. That's, that's the hard one. Or the coat closet, Fabrizio. Uh, you know, they, they don't even know each other. Some of them don't even know each other. Like, yeah, I heard you got the bathroom. I don't know. Even, I've never met you or anything. I got a kitchen, you know. I'd be willing to sell you the kitchen, you know, because I don't even really care about this. I don't even know how I got this. I got a call, and they're like, hey, you got a kitchen. <laughs> I got a kitchen. I thought you'd say I got land. I got money from, you know. No, you, you're the proud new owner of a kitchen in Italy, in Patrica. <sighs> now I got to fly to Patrica to go to my kitchen? Is that what we're doing here? If I was a chef, I'd do it. I'm not a chef, okay? Disposal, okay, we know in some instances, homes were never officially split between heirs in the past, so the ownership line had broken away long ago without a clear indication. <laughs> oh my goodness. I still, I think it's amazing to me that I, I, that's not done in the United States. We do not split up pieces of the house. Maybe if it's a big property and you have like, hey, there's two houses on the property. Hey, Tommy, you get one, and Jill, you get the other, you know? But... <laughs> Besides that, you're not splitting and putting people in the bathroom and stuff like that. That, that still makes me laugh. I got to read that again. Like, that can't be real, right? In the past, it's customary for children to inherit parts of their family home, including patches of land, wells and orchards, <laughs> multiple heirs who own just a section, like a bathroom or the balcony, or you're the proud owner of the espresso machine in the kitchen. And nothing could be sold without written consent from the bathroom owner or Fabrizio over there in the coat closet. Anyway, guys, that's what's happening in Patrica. They managed to sell parts of the one euro scheme and they were fully owned by two locals. So no liaising with fourth degree cousins or great grand cousins or whatever. They could sell those properties without any complications. So they got a buck each. In the situations where family feuds are at play, family feud, Relatives, have we done the family feud yet? Yeah, we did. I did. I'm Steve Markey. You guys remember it? It was pretty ridiculous. I may play it for you at the end of the show. <laughs> it's only two minutes long. It's one of the funniest game shows I've done. I've done about every game show. But the family feud with the Milkies. 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 Travis Milke. Guy's nine foot tall with a bow tie. <laughs> There's comedy in that alone. Milke. You know? 
Anyway, original owners have been living elsewhere for many years and wary of making themselves known to the authorities and potentially being hit with back taxes. So, I don't know, who's going to Italy to Patrico to get a, a house for a buck? This is a 74-page story. I'm not getting into that much. You saw it. That's it. This, like, shack shed over here could be yours. The rest of it is owned by a different family member. But they'll, they'll sell you this shack. You also see this, like, there's a vent system here for when they have all exhaust to leave the house. That's also for sale because that's owned for, by a distant cousin. He, he could sleep in it if he wants. It stays nice and, and cozy there in the wintertime. So, I mean, this is what you get, guys, I guess, when you go to Italy and you're like, hey, you know, I wonder if there are any cheap houses here in Italy. Patrika, just bring a friggin' buck and change, you know, because it's euro. It's a dollar euro, which is a little more. We're thinking maybe like a buck 16, you know? So you bring it, throw a little change in your pocket. Everybody's happy. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like on the way out the door. Leave a comment and share. I'm live at 9 a.m. and after 9 p.m. So join us. This is the Mark Inspire Show.